Good afternoon to all members of the media. I am pleased to announce today that the Viking cruise ship Orion arrives in Bermuda waters this Friday, the 21st of May, two days ahead of schedule. Their or original arrival was the 23rd of May. The Orion will remain at anchor in the Great Sound for six days to complete its 14-day quarantine period. Viking will arrive with a crew of 460 and intends to sail with a reduced capacity of 50% on their first cruise. We want to assure the public that the COVID testing protocol along onboard Viking is the most superior compared to any other cruise line. The company has spent millions of dollars outfitting each ship to mitigate COVID-19. I'm also pleased to announce that the Orion will arrive in Hamilton on the 27th of May and the cruise is intended to stay on board the crew is intended to stay on board to ready the ship for the first Bermuda 8-day escape cruise on the 15th of June. The ship will visit all three Bermuda ports in Hamilton, Dockyard and St. George's. It is intended that the Bermuda Escape home porting itinerary will conclude on the 3rd of August. Although we are hopeful that success of this summer's program will lead to an extension of the Vikings Bermuda Escape itinerary in addition to becoming a more regular port of call for years to come. We welcome this much needed stimulus to our economy Home porting will generate more airlift in and out of Bermuda. It will for local transportation, hotel, shore excursion, bunkering, freshwater provisioning, and garbage disposal services. It also creates potential for pre- and post-cruise extensions visits. We look forward to seeing a buzz with increased visitors during the summer months and beyond. Like many industries in Bermuda, the island tour boats and charter industry has struggled with reduced demand and reduced customer. The Bermuda tour boat is to request support and assistance through these harsh times and until they can operate to some level of normalcy. Their requests included relief from payroll tax, liquor licensing fees, boat licensing fees. The association also requested to operate with capacity greater than the 10 to 25 person maximum under various COVID-19 related regulations over the last year. Additionally, they requested that current fuel rebate allowance for May to October be extended for the entire year and that a moratorium on charter and island boats be introduced. These two items are still under consideration since the ministry prioritized the request to address the most time sensitive matters. Their requests were considered and while boat licensing fees were increased by 5% across the board for 2021-2022, fees were not increased for the boat and charter industry. The liquor licensing fee was also reduced by 50% this year and those who applied from the tour boat and charters industry also received unemployment benefits. The government has also revised COVID guidelines from the 9th of May of this year to allow them to operate with reduced capacity. The COVID-19 maximum capacity of marine and ports. This will be reviewed regularly and is subject to change as required based on Bermuda's COVID status. Lastly, as the weather gets warmer and more and more Bermudians and visitors take part in Bermuda's boating and active boating culture, we would want to remind boaters and watercraft users to be mindful of others and use care and caution. Please, remind, please be reminded that each of us have a role to play in stopping the spread of the coronavirus.
Follow public health guidelines. Wash your hands often. Wear a mask. Maintain physical distance and download the We Health Bermuda app. Do research, talk to your doctor, and make an informed decision about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Owen Johnson Barnes with the Royal Gazette. Uh, to start off with, um, you mentioned an increase in airlift to accommodate these home ports. Uh, can you quantify that at all? Can you give us an idea of how many more flights are coming in from where? Are these going to be charters? So if you uh, would have, it was in the media not too long ago that the Bermuda Airport, the Bermuda Tourism Authority uh, touted that there was a doubling in the scheduled air service to the island, to and from the island. And so that would be from our main gateway cities. Now, um, one issue that's been coming up fairly regularly with the airport is that min minimum revenue guarantee. Uh, will these additional flights help to mitigate that? Any additional uh, airlift, any additional passenger numbers will help mitigate that risk. Is it anticipated that more payments will have to come out this summer? Yes, it is anticipated that more payments will come out this summer, being as though the global travel trend is depressed below the 2019 numbers and that is expected to happen for the next uh, two to three years. Now, uh, government last night uh, discussed the uh, Safe Key program. Um, obviously, that could potentially be a huge benefit for restaurants. I was wondering if uh, that was being linked to these, this home porting initiative so that people could perhaps come in and then, while on island, enjoy the indoor restaurants, perhaps enjoy tours, things of that nature. Things like that would always be an uh, option but it has not been uh, decisively or definitively planned for or put into the plans moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, also with the home porting, there's going to be an additional strain on public transportation potentially. Um, how is that going to be addressed? I mean, do we have mini bus capacity? Do we have bus capacity, particularly with limited seating? We are anticipating that the public service vehicle industry as a whole will benefit and the public vehicle industry as a whole have the capacity and the resources to make sure that travel into and around the country is as seamless as possible. And do we have any updated figures on booking numbers for these um, home porting cruises? We, we have been informed that 80% of the cruises are, have already been booked. Good afternoon, Minister. Good afternoon. Uh, earlier when you were talking about the uh, home boarding and uh, Viking Orion, you said a crew of 460. That's correct. And then I think you said 50%? So the, they will be operating at a 50% capacity. So the crew is, at, is, is 460 persons, but they will be taking 50% of the total capacity of the ship in revenue customers. So. How much is 50 percent? It's they usually can take uh, 900, so it run the f 950, so run the 400, 500 mark is where they're going to be starting with their first uh, cruise. Thank you. Um, I, I along the way have heard that airlines have reduced costs to fly people. I don't know if it's back out or in and out, uh, but somewhere along the way the eyes picked up something saying reduce airline costs. Enlighten me on that. Uh, what you might have, what you might be referring to, is that there were promotion, promotional um, marketing schemes that were programs, pr promotional marketing programs with the ver with various uh, home porting cruise lines, and that might be part of their package. If you home if you book a cruise out of Bermuda, your airfare is included, and therefore it would work out to be this much. You so. That's not your baby, it's... No, that would be marketing with the cruise lines that are home porting. Okay. Switching up a little bit, um, TCD. When I took a little go-by ride, I see a line going around the corner. Can you bring me up to speed with what's happening there? Yes, that's, with the, that's in line with the COVID protocols, so where we can't have any more than 10 to 25 people uh, congregating, so we have to space them out, and so therefore it does end up coming outside uh, the building. 
But as the protocols or the restrictions are relaxed, as we get better and we start moving from community spread to uh, sporadic cases, we anticipate that we'll be able to get back to mo a more normal feel at the TCD. Um, yeah. Going back again to Friday, Orion coming in, you said staying out, where to, in the Great Bay? It, great Sound. Sound? Yes, the Great Sound. Uh, so it, it was anticipated on taking 10 days to get here. And so, therefore, they would stay in at anchor for an additional four days. So they would have the 14-day quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Since they are coming in earlier, they will, they will extend their time at anchor before coming in. So instead of four days at anchor, it is now six days at anchor. How is that going to work with uh, ferry boats or whatever is picking up the people to get them in? And no, no. So, no, that's not when the revenue customers go on. That's just for right now. That is just the initial introduction to the island. They must follow the, quarant the COVID quarantine guidelines set by the Ministry of Health. And so any mariner coming to the island must uh, quarantine for 14 days with time at sea taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. So when you have the revenue customers, they will come, they'll go to Hamilton, it will come straight into Hamilton on the 27th, and from there it will start cruising out of Hamilton. So mm -hmm. the board in Hamilton go do a, a cruise uh, to nowhere, go back in, go to St. George's, cruise to, two days in St. George's, cruise uh, for a day, a day in Dockyard, cruise for a day back into Hamilton. And just to reiterate, everyone on this cruise is fully, vaccinated. fully immunized. They are vaccinated, yes. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Minister. We have concluded our press conference for today. Thank you.